before you tonight. When we reflect two years ago, King of the Globe, we have a reason to thank you, dear Lord. Thank you because you are God. Our Father and our God, we want to praise you tonight. You ordained families from the beginning. Yes. From the Garden of Eden. Yes. And here we are as a generation, King of the Glory. Yes, Lord. And you had a good purpose in the garden for us to enjoy and to live in the land. Yes, Lord. Not to live to suffer, but to praise you and to exalt your name. Yes, Lord. But calamity will come across our lives. But we still remain God. Oh, yes. A faithful God. Yes, Lord. A God who has no changes. Yes. But who change the situation of our lives. Yes, Lord. And therefore, Lord, tonight we gather here. Yes, Lord. And say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, King of the Glory. Thank you. Hallelujah. Our Father and our God. Yes, Lord. We thank you and we glorify your name. Yes, Lord. For the family we read shall. The family will be sick of your word day and night. Mm. The family will humble themselves 
every morning, every evening, and during that time to praise and to honor you, Lord. The family will gather as a family and have fellowship, oh God. They'll fast together as a, as a family, Lord. They walk hand in hand like a family, oh God, because you call family to glorify your neighbor. That was the purpose of a family, King of the glory. And tonight we are releasing this family tonight, Lord. And to you, Father, let it be. Let the family rise up. Rise up. Rise up, family, tonight. The Lord is picking up blessing in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. We thank you. And everyone say amen. 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 And our families will never be the same. Amen. And our families will never be the same. Amen. Because the Lord that healed has visited us. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. I will ask Pastor Njoroge to come and pray for this community. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Can I request us to stand up in the presence of the Lord? We thank you, mighty Father, for every miracle. We thank you for every breakthrough. We thank you, King of glory, for every step of progress, oh God. We thank you for every growth in our community. We thank you for the men. We thank you for the women. We thank you for the youth. We thank you then for the toddlers, mighty Father. Thank you because you have been together with us this far. Thank you because we shall enjoy your presence even more. Thank you for hearing this, our prayer, O oh God, and performing it to us. We bless you and we exalt you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and even believe. Amen. Thank you so much. You may have your seat. Welcome, Baba Skofu. Somebody get annoyed and declare, I am not a failure. I am not a failure. Somebody declare with the, uh, with a passion, I am not a failure. I refuse to be a failure. I refuse to be a failure. Another one I normally do is, I refuse to live a poor life. I refuse to live a poor life. You know, just, just, why don't you, why don't you get that and with a passion and say, I refuse to live a poor life. I refuse to live a poor life. Declare, I refuse to be limited by any powers. I refuse to be limited by any powers. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. May you walk in that anointing. May you walk in that anointing. May you walk in that grace. Walk in that grace. May you see your life change. Amen. Huh? So anything that limits you, anything that limits you brings pain to the master. And you can stand and declare, this thing that is limiting me, you are under my control. Yes. I refuse to accept you. Yes. I refuse to give you permission to operate yes. in my life. Yes. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Because what, what the Bible tells us, whatever we bind here on earth is bound in heaven. Yes. You know, where, where we go wrong is where we are expecting when we hear the word of God, you feel something inside. Oh, I feel the tree. That the word is entering. The word is entering. It is not entering. It is not by feeling. It is you receive the word and you know that word is mine. You know. Let me, give, let, me, let me give you a, a story, of, a testimony of my, of my daughter. I have two sons and one daughter. When this girl was a kid, two and a half, two years, two and a half years old, or just around there, I, I, and the, the, the boys were in nursery school. One was in nursery school, the other one I think was in primary school. And the, and the girl was to go to nursery school. So I told the girl, when the school's closed, I will buy you uniform and I will take you to school. That was all. And the girl started singing a song that he said, when the school's close and then they open, he will buy me a uniform and take me to school. That year, the system changed. 
And they said they cannot take anybody in nursery school if they are not three years. And she was going to be two and a half in January. And having been a teacher, I saw the Sakura. So when the schools opened, I went, I went, I went to, to see the sister in the nursery school. And the sister told me, Mr. Karyuki, we can't help you because this is the circular. You read it. And I read the circular. When, when I read the circular, and I remembered when we, were, when we were kids growing up, we used to ask somebody, where is it written? Where is it written? Now the sister has shown me where it is written. So I knew he can't make it. So I went home and I settled. Well, the girl can, will wait until she is three and a half. She will go to school to nursery when she is three and a half. But the girl had heard what the father had said. And she said, Daddy said, when the schools open, he will buy me uniform and take me to school. Sure enough, the schools opened. And the boys, I took the boys to school. But the girl was left at home. She never bothered. She didn't cry. She didn't quarrel. She didn't ask her mother anything. She was playing Euro with the, with the others. And the boys would come and tell her, Lee, you are not going to school. She said, no, daddy said, when the schools open, he will buy me uniform and he will take me to school. And the boys would say, see, we have come from school. She didn't care whether they came from school or not. All she cared was that he said. So in the evening when we were at home, the boys would say, Lynn, you are not going to school, daddy. She is not going to school. And Lynn would say, daddy said. Then she would ask, daddy, she would say, my you. You see, you said that. And I would say, yes. And I know. She is not going. <laughs> so that, that game continued for two weeks. Two weeks. But she still uh, stood on the words of the daddy. By her, because of her words, I was forced to go uh, to another school. I went to another school. This time, a different daddy. I went there and I told the sister, sister, you are the one to help me. You must help me. This is the situation. I explained the situation to the sister. And the sister said, Mr. Karyuki, we can't help you. We have, a, we have a circular here. Unless you agree that the girl will stay here for two years. I said, even if she stays for three or four, <laughs> let her come. Even if she has got to stay for four years, let her come and stay. Why? Because she stood on the word of the father. Yes. Amen. The moment the sister said you can bring the girl, hey. oh, I went to I went to the to the shop on oh, Kenyatta, Kenyatta Avenue. Yes. Uh, Shah's house, uh, Shah's shop. I went there and I asked the uniform for a three, two and a half year kid. They gave me a long dress. I didn't know her size, so they gave me a long dress, but I got it, and I, and I bought some shoes, and I, you could have, you should have seen me walking home. Oh, man, I was walking like a father. I went there and waited for all the others. When I waited for all the others, I called, Lynn, come here, take this, you go dress. And she got the uniform, went to the bedroom. The guard came, the dress was reaching right here. But she did not, that was not a problem. She asked, how do I look like? How do I look like? How do I look like? She was so excited. I took her to school the following day. The following day. As soon as I got there, she wants to run to the classroom. She even doesn't know which one, but she wants to run. I had to hold her hand and tell her, no, today, let's go to the, to the sister. So we went to the sisters. I left her there smiling. I'm the one who took my kids to school on the first day. The two boys, when I took them on their own, every, I left them crying. This one, I left uh, laughing. This one, I left enjoying herself. Why? She was able to stand on her father's word. It is not me. It is, was not my faith that took her to school. It was her faith. Now I'm telling you that story to say to you, can we have somebody here who will rise up and stand on the word and say, God said he will prosper me in a strange land. God 
said, I will not die, but live to declare the goodness of the Lord. Jehovah has said that whatever I touch to do with my heart, it shall prosper. Standing on the promises of God. So don't allow any limitations in your life. Don't allow anyone, anything to limit you, to tell you that you cannot. You cannot make it. I came to declare to you, you can make it. You shall make it. I said, you shall make it. In the name of Jesus Christ. But remember this. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent take it by force. In other words, there will be opposition. But the opposition is not to finish you. The opposition is to be a stepping stone for you. So you can get higher. You can climb higher. Is someone hearing me? Yes. Is, this is a statement we like making so much. It is not easy. It was not easy. I struggled. Who told you that life was going to be easy? Life is a battle, Boana. Life is a battle. But it's a battle to be won. And battles are not won by cowards. Battles are won, won by people who are courageous. That's why God tells Joshua, Joshua, where you are taking these people to their, to, to their inheritance. But you know what? Be strong and courageous. He didn't give him all the details. But he just told him, you be strong and be courageous. In other words, there are giants. There is Jericho there waiting for you. There are battles waiting for you. But all you need to do is to be strong and courageous. I came to tell somebody, be strong Amen. and courageous. Amen. Every limitation in your life, Amen. every limitation in your life has years. Amen. And tonight, tonight, Amen. we are canceling those limitations Amen. in the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. So, limitation pains God. Jesus wept that he's got to bring Lazarus back into the land of limitations. But so that God may be glorified, he said, Lazarus, come. So Lazarus had to come. My imagination, this is again Makaluk imagination. When Jesus said, Lazarus, he just didn't say, come forth. Because if he said that, you, you have no idea how many would have come. <laughs> but he called Lazarus come forth. So I can Abraham, I can Enoch, I can Elisha, I can Elijah, all those guys. They may have been having a fellowship with Lazarus. But the moment Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth, they told him, You are called, you have been called. Where you have been called, you go, you go, you go. So Lazarus had to come out of that land, get into this body, which was already stinking, get into that body, which was already bound, and he had to come. I don't know whether he was jump jumping or he was rolling, but he came out. Then Jesus said, lose him. Lose him. So limitation made Jesus weep. The second thing that you have got to fight in this land and in this world that wants to keep you from achieving what God has given to you made Jesus weep when he is getting into Jerusalem. This is the triumphant entry. The scenario is a scenario of rejoicing. People are celebrating because the master is coming. They are all singing, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he 
who comes in the name of the Lord. It is a celebration. They are not even afraid or ashamed as they remove their jackets and they put them on the roads. They cut the palm leaves, the palm branches, and put them on the, on the road so that Jesus' donkey can ride on them. It's a moment of celebration. And you know Jerusalem was down in the valley, surrounded by hills. So to get into Jerusalem, you have got to go up the hill. Then you see the city from the top of the hill and you start descending. That's why when you read the Psalms, you will find there are the Psalms of ascent and there are Psalms of descent. So that when David was going up, there is a song that they were singing as they are approaching the top of the hill before they start descending into Jerusalem. So as, they, as he ascends, they are celebrating. They are singing Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest then he gets to a point and the mood changes. The mood changes. And it changes because they see the master. Everybody is celebrating. And all of a sudden, Jesus stops celebrating and now he starts weeping. He weeps over the city. Why is Jesus weeping over the city? he weeps he says Jerusalem if only you had known if you had known in fact he goes further and says because you do not know no stone will be left upon one another in other words your ignorance is going to bring destruction to you. So Jesus is weeping because of ignorance, or because of the ignorance of the people. But the people in Jerusalem have not recognized the times and the seasons in which they are living. They are not like the sons of Issachar. Who knew the times and the seasons. These ones don't know anything. Could you be in Seattle. And you have no idea. The time and the season. That you are living. Opportunities come. Opportunities come. But you see them going. Because you have no knowledge. Of what is going on. When we go to Hosea 4 in verse number 6, what does it say? My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Ignorance. Ignorance of the, of the word. Ignorance of the season. Ignorance of the time. Brings destruction. So Jesus is weeping because of the ignorance of the people in Jerusalem. Because they do not know that this is their time of visitation. Is it possible that we could be living in uh, Seattle and you have no idea that this is the time of your visitation? Because you are preoccupied with the social media. You are preoccupied with what so and so has said about you. You are preoccupied in the search or with the search of the dollar. And you do not realize that the time has come. The time for your visitation. You know, I, I remember this yesterday. I said, I do not understand. I do not understand how one day, one moment, I am dedicating 
I am dedicating the state house one moment. We are here busy dedicating the state house, raising an altar in the state house with the president and his family and other people. And then the other moment, I am in Atlanta, not Atlanta, what do you call this place? Yes. Seattle. I am in Seattle where there are issues. I don't understand, but I know God is involved. Yeah. I know in my Noah, yeah. God is saying something to you. Yeah. I know in my spirit that God is raising someone here. Yeah. God is raising yeah. someone here yeah. and telling them, come out of that situation. Yeah. Come out of that battle. Yeah. Come out of that failure. Yeah. Come out of the place of condemnation. Yeah. Come out of that situation. Yeah. God is raising somebody. Yeah. It is not by accident that I am here. Queen Kabisa, it's not by accident. It's not by accident. It is because somebody has been crying to God. Somebody has been praying. Somebody has been saying, oh God, deliver us. Oh God, rescue us. Oh God, your church has been disgraced. Oh God, we, I don't feel like identifying with this city. And God has heard your cry yeah. and sent me to come and tell you, your cry has been heard. Yeah. Your prayers have been heard. Yeah. And your situation is changing yeah. in the name of Jesus Christ. Someone has been crying, oh God, how long is this going to be? How long is this battle going to be? I came to say to you, your battle is over. Yeah. Your battle is over. Your fears are over. Your frustrations are over. Somebody pray with me. My father, my father, my father. Open my eyes. That I may see what you are saying to me now. In Jesus name. May God open your eyes. May the Lord open your eyes. May you see what the Lord is saying. In Jesus name. So ignorance brings destruction. What Jesus said, you shall know the truth. Look at look at Paul writing to the church in Ephesus. Many years after he has pastored that church, he was a pastor in Ephesus. Now he is in prison. Many years later, he's writing to the church and he is telling, he is telling them, ever since I heard of your faith in Ephesians 1 from 15 verse, ever since I heard of your faith and of your, of your love for all the saints, I cease not to pray for you. To make mention of you in my prayers. And this is how I pray. That God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened or being opened up. Now these are people who are born again. These are the people who he has pastored. This is a church that has been there for many years. But he is saying that your eyes may be opened up. You know many times we, we, we say when the sun sets you free, you are a free indeed. Then you think you have all the freedom. You know everything. As you grow, as you grow in him, revelation keeps coming. And revelation brightens your path. As you receive the word of healing, you will discover Allah. Kube, I was healed 2,000 years ago. This thing is a lie. Sickness is a lie. It's been lying to me. I'm rising up. I am rising up from this day in the name of Jesus Christ. You become a stickler, a stickler of the word. That you stand by the word. 
you, and like my daughter, like my daughter, you declare, my daddy said, my daddy said, in this nation, I'm going to prosper. Amen. Amen. It is ignorance of the word that has caused you to be where you are today. You are where you know you are by the word you have received or by the revelation you have received. It is the revelation you receive that will take you to the next level. I'm, I'm preaching one day. I'm preaching one day, preaching and teaching and talking. And as I told you, me, I, I, I like going around when I'm preaching because I value the eye contact. Yes. I value the, the eye contact. It's very important. So I'm preaching and, and telling the people, everything has ears. There is nothing without ears. Why do I say that? Because everything came as a result of the word. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. When you go to Genesis, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In Genesis 1, from verse 1, to that one, you will find in from the King James, all the King James, that about ten times, ten about ten times, it says, and God said, 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 let there be light. What happened? There was light. That means wherever light was, it had God, and it had to appear. Then God said. Let the earth bring forth trees and grass and plants. Wherever they were hiding or wherever they were, they came forth. That means the earth had God. It has ears. Then he spoke to the waters and told the waters, let the waters bring forth fish, whales, omena, and all the animals that live in water. And they came forth. Then he said, let us, let us make men in our own image. As Elohim had and man came. That's why God had to breathe into the shape of the man. So that man becomes a living soul. So everything has ears. That is why. When Jesus sees this tree, the fig tree, and it had nothing, he went there and checked to find out if there are any fruits. When he didn't find any, he said, nobody will eat from you from this day. And the tree had and said, sir, yes, sir. It started drying from the roots. Started drying from the roots. It started from the unseen to the seen. The roots are not seen. The branches are seen. The branches manifest what is going on in the roots. Your miracle does not start in the physical. It starts in the spiritual. Your miracle starts from the world of the unseen. And it comes into the world of the seen. But you know it is we. Who even confuse the people. Because you come and I pray for you. In the name of Jesus. Receive your miracle. So how are you feeling now? How are you feeling now? It doesn't. The feelings don't appear anywhere. It starts in the inside. And it comes out. Hallelujah. So I'm teaching in church. Everything has ears. And I told the people. Wait. Well, listen. Even to, your tomatoes have ears. Yeah. If you are a tomato seller, you are selling tomatoes by the roadside. You are sitting there, tomato, 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 Bay Johnny, tomato, tomato, and nobody is buying your tomatoes. And now they have started shrinking. Don't start telling everybody, oh, this one, this, this one has a uh, banti me manichoma. This, this one has uh, is a is a loss. It's a loss. Ah, ah, you look at your tomatoes and tell your tomatoes, tomato, I did not buy you. 
to rot in my kiosk. I bought you to be bought. So you must be bought in the name of Jesus Christ. Those tomatoes will start attracting people who like tomatoes that have a heart. <laughs> you will find somebody coming and selecting all the tomatoes that seem to be... <laughs> they seem to be saying bye-bye. And they put them aside, then they ask you, how much? How much is this? And you're wondering, are they normal? I told, I, told them, I told the people, if you are selling second-hand clothes, and you have gotten your bale of clothes, you open and you find all of them are oversized. All of them are oversized. Don't rush to say, oh, this one, this one is a loss. This one has finished me. This one is a, has finished me. Ah, uh ah. -uh. You look at those clothes and tell them, I did not buy you to come and chum me. Yes. I bought you to be bought. Yes. So you must be bought. Yes. I told the people, if you are selling curious, curious, mm. and your curious are not going, you tell the curious, talk to the curious, they will hear you. Yes. I did not know that in church that day, there was a certain lady who was selling curious. She did sell on Sundays, but she had the word. And she decided, I am going to speak to my curious, which have not, which have stayed in the kiosk for a long time. So she released her husband and children to go home. And she said, I will pass by the kiosk. She passed by the kiosk, opened her kiosk, and got in and shut the door. She looked at all the curious that had been there for a long time. And she told them, you killed you. I did not buy you to stay in my kiosk. I bought you to be bought. So you must be bought according to the word of the bishop in the name of Jesus Christ. And she finished. She opened the door so she could close the, 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 the kiosk and go. But the, as soon as she opened the door, there were four white ladies. And as soon as she opened, they, they want to go in. And they got in there, in her kiosk. They started picking on the curios that had been there for a long time. And they would ask her, how much is this? 2,500. They would put it aside. How much is this? 5,000. They put, it, put them aside. She told me she sold 80,000 shillings. 80,000 shillings. The following Sunday, she came to church. I don't know whether he, she listened to whatever I was preaching that day, but she was in church. As soon as I said the benediction and I finished greeting the people, me, I like greeting them. I like greeting people. I like greeting people. So I'm sitting there saying, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. She comes and she tells me, Bishop, this is what you are teaching. It is working. It is working. So she gave me the whole story. She gave me the whole, the whole story. Of, and she told me she even had forms from the bank. She was going to take a loan. But now she has seen this word is working. I told her, you keep speaking to them. They have ears. And sure enough, she continued speaking to them. After a few months, she came to me again and told me, Bishop, God, my business is doing well. Now I want to go to Southern Sudan. I told her, even in Southern Sudan, they have ears. You go and speak to them. Amen. And she left for Southern Sudan. For some time, I didn't see her. I didn't even think about her and because she was gone. And one Sunday morning, I am busy greeting the people. God bless you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. God bless you. I'm greeting the people. And then she comes and I greet her. God bless you. And she says, Bishop, do you remember me? I said, yes, I do. How is, uh, how is uh, Southern Sudan? She said, God has blessed me. Can I come to your office? Now, I said, yeah, you, you come to the office. I was, she had come in the first service. So she came to the first service and she told me, she came to the office and told me, Bishop, God has blessed me. Now, I am no longer selling curio. I am now a wholesaler. Amen. I have my own lorry. I have my own lorry. I buy things here and I go and I, 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 I put them in my shop. I have two shops. 
And Bishop, that time I was raising money to buy a truck for the gospel. And then she says, and Bishop, I see you are raising money because I was putting it on the screen. Uh, you are raising money to buy a lorry. I will give you one million. Wow. I will give you one million. I did not sing a song. I had not asked for money. I was just displaying how much money the people had, been, had given. She told me, I will give you one million. Can I, do, do you have a bank account? And I called the pastor. I said, the pastor, give her the, the account for the truck. She was given the, the, the account number and she left. That was, that was on Sunday. Monday, or oh, everything was okay. Wednesday afternoon, the phone in my, the, 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 my phone rang. I picked it up. It was her on the other side. Bishop, the account number I was given is for Kenya shilling. And we don't use the Kenya shilling here. We use the dollar. Do you have a dollar account? So she asked, do you have a dollar account? And then me. I tell her no. Uh, not, not, not me. Not me. Somebody, somebody else will tell her no. But not me. I tell her no. Hey. And the million is coming. Uh, uh, I told her, give me, give me a few minutes, I will call you back. I will, I will call you back. I will call you back. As soon as I disconnected, my teacher in school college told me, you start from the known to the unknown. I knew in Akuru, I am known better than in Nairobi. So I, and I have the, the number of the bank manager in Akuru. I called the bank manager. Bona manager, I want to open a dollar account now. I am sending Pastor Paul to come and sign the papers. He, he will sign the papers. Me, I will sign when I come. Thank you, sir. Me, I will sign when I come. He said, no problem, Bishop. That's okay. I called the pastor. I told the pastor, can you go to Equity Bank, Kenyatta Avenue, now? Open a dollar account. And then uh, uh, you sign the forms. Me, I will sign when I come. He said, no problem. Do it now. And he left. When he got there, he and the manager called me and asked me, where, well, Bishop, what do you call this account? <laughs> I didn't even have a name for the account. What do you call, what do you call this account? I told him, call, call it Deliverance Church Dollar. <laughs> so they opened an account called Deliverance Church Dollar. And they sent me the number, the, the account number and the name. I pressed in my, in, on my phone, forward. <laughs> to South, uh, it went to Southern, Southern Sudan. Amen. After about 10, 15 minutes, the manager called. The manager called me and told Bishop, this account we have opened, there is money that has been put there equivalent to one million. I said, thank you very much, sir. I will sign the forms when I come. <laughs> who was a curio seller who was struggling to sell her curios in ignorance not knowing that curios have ears until the day she heard that curios have ears and she decided to act on that one Amen. let me tell you my friend there are people here who are going to decide to act on this work and you will hear their testimonies. You will hear their testimonies. There are others who will leave this place and they will be asking you, what, what, what did he say? What was that he was saying? It is you to determine in which group you are going to operate. Amen. Nobody can decide for you. Yes. It is you to decide. Yes. That I will stand on this word. Yes. I am no longer going to walk in ignorance. Yes. I will declare the oracles of God. Yes. I will not be ashamed. Yes. I am not a victim. Yes. I am anointed yes. for my day. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 
So ignorance brings pain to God. So you purpose that from this day I am not going to walk in ignorance. The moment I that scripture was read to me about Christ, the mystery that was hid for many generations and ages has now been revealed to us which is Christ in you the hope of glory Christ in me Christ in me I received that revelation I decided to act on it immediately I went to church. I told the people, there are things I said here which I will never say again. I told them, there are songs we have been singing here, we will not sing them again. Because some of us think that some of those songs are canonical. Or they are equal to the Bible. And they are man-made. Some of them were sung by backsliders. And you are not a backslider. I stood in front of the church and I told them, I have quit working for God. I have been working for God and not seeing anything, not finding anything. I have quit working for God. From today, uh, God and I make one team, the unbeatable team. God and I are working together. We are one. I started teaching people this to the people and I told them God and you are one. In other words, when you are laying your hands on the sick, yes. the hand of God is there. Amen. If God wants to bless anybody, he will use you. Amen. If God wants to save anybody, he will use you. Yes. You see, Jesus told them at the, Lazarus, uh, the grave of Lazarus, roll away the stone. You roll away the stone. When he had the power to tell the stone, move off the way. Yeah. Or even to tell Lazarus, Lazarus, you pierced through the stone. Yeah. And he would have pierced through the stone and appeared in front of the stone. Mm -hmm. But the people had, uh, had a work to do. Mm -hmm. And you have a work to do. Yes. People are not going to be born again if you are not tell, going to tell them that they can be born again. Mm -hmm. Your church is not going to grow if you don't tell the people that they have got to tell others. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, my friends, this is where the members were. When the, when the ministers were standing, the members were here. Let me tell you, let me tell you, if you are not excited about your pastor, nobody will be excited about your pastor. You have got to be excited about your pastor if you believe in your pastor. And you cannot attend a church where you don't believe in the pastor. You cannot be a member of the church where you have no confidence in the pastor. That when you finish the service, I don't even hear what he said. I don't understand him. Wait. If you are going to, to, to tear down your pastor, you are tearing yourself down. You have got to honor your pastor. You have got to honor the anointing upon him. Because that is what will take you to the next level. It is not a double, working double. You will work double and still have nothing. Because you have dishonored the servant of God. And that is where we have a problem in the, Ken the Kenyan community. That's where we have the problem. Because you do not honor the servants of God. Because you are doing the same job. Or maybe you know he came as cargo. <laughs> You know you have heard him say he came as cargo. He has filed. What is that they filed? What do you call it? A Salem, yeah. You know he has filed a Salem like you. So you think you are the same. Liar. I better tell you. Now. Because this is the final meeting. And I've got to get out of this place. And I have my ticket in my pocket. I have my ticket in my pocket. So I better tell you the way it is. If you 
do not honor your pastor. You do not honor the man of God or the woman of God. I want you to know you are destroying yourself. It doesn't matter how powerful you may be. It doesn't matter how educated you may be. Every time they preach, you will never receive that revelation because you are seeing their crooked tie. You are looking at them and you are saying, even my wife is better dressed by his wife than his wife. Even I am I even my suits are a better who <laughs> I, 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 are you with me? Yes. If you do not honor that anointing, you are destroying yourself and destroying your children. Those of you who are used to sitting down and tearing down the men and the women of God, you are destroying yourself. Oh, Pastor. Bishop, are you telling me the men of God are perfect? No, they are not perfect. Some of them are thick in the head. But it doesn't matter how thick they are. As long as you have said, this is my pastor, you are saying, this is my connection with God. This is my connection with God. It, it means, if you see they are thick in the head, it means... God has given you the grace to carry the sickness. Hallelujah. The grace of God is upon you to carry that sickness. I know. I know. I am speaking to people from different backgrounds. But whatever your background is, it does not change the word of God. It does not change the word of God. The word of God remains sure. We dishonor, dishonor fathers. We dishonor fathers because we think we are better than they are. You go and ask Ham and the children of Ham. They will tell you the result of dishonor. Because it was Ham who despised his father, who saw his father's nakedness. It is not Ham who was naked. Ham was not drunk. It is his father who was drunk. He is the one who planted the vineyards. He is the one who went to the Shabbat and harvested the grapes. And he prepared the juice. And he let it stay there longer. Then it should have stayed. He is the one who put it in his own cup or container and drank and became drunk. So if there was anybody with a problem, it was him. He is the one who fell down carelessly and left himself naked and slept there naked. Then Ham came, innocent, singing in the choir, innocent interpreter an innocent deacon he went there innocently and when he got there his father was fallen naked and he said hey this one where is my my, my, my phone Kacha, Kacha, Kacha. Kacha, 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 Kacha. And he took pictures. He went back to his brothers. Ah, the cowed man. The cowed man is kaput. He is kaput. He is like there like this. Come and see, come and see. What are you saying? He is stuck naked. He is open like this. He, he went to viral. <laughs> he went to viral. He is there like this. All the pictures were there. Caught in the very act. The brothers said, is that so? They said, let's go. They took a, blan a blanket and they decided there is no way we can go there with our faces. We will go reverse. Mm -hmm. So they went reverse. 
so that they don't see their father's nakedness. They dropped the blanket, covered the father, and left. The father being covered was asleep and drunk. But he was covered. When he got to himself, he knew what harm had done. That's where the troubles of Ham's children started. Because he never covered his father. He exposed his father's nakedness. And many times we like exposing the nakedness of our fathers. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. They're destroyed for lack of knowledge. I told those who are there yesterday, I don't know whatever, yes, one of the meetings yesterday about Miriam and Aaron. Miriam and Aaron were the elder or older siblings of Moses. Moses was the younger one, but he is the one who was called. He is the one who was carrying the anointing. He is the one who met with God face to face. He is the one who called Aaron and Miriam and told them, by the way, we are going. I have met with the great I am, and things are changing. Miriam was there to read choruses after they crossed the after they crossed the, 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 the crossed the Red Sea. She was reading choruses, so she was a worship leader. Aaron was the assistant pastor. He was the assistant pastor. He was the one who was doing the evening sacrifice. And they knew what Moses had been told not to marry from outside. But Moses, in his own way, decided to marry a girl from northern Kenya in Ethiopia. He married an Ethiopian girl. It was not a lie. It was the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So Aaron and Miriam decided to have a discussion in the absence of Moses. And they said, this younger brother of ours, who does he think he is? We also hear from God. This pastor of ours, he thinks he's the only one who God speaks to. We also hear God. We also speak in tongues. We also pray. God also hears us. And they talked against Moses. Moses did not hear. Moses did not know that they had talked against him. But God had. In other words, every time you talk against God's servant, God hears. God hears. So God decided, I've got to deal with this problem here and now. He didn't talk to them. He talked to Moses and told Moses, Moses, get me Aaron and Miriam. Let's meet in the tabernacle at, 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 this at this time. And Moses told them, well, we have been called. We are meeting in the tabernacle. And he went into the tabernacle. And God came. When God came, he stood at the door. God stood at the door. In other words, nobody's leaving. You can't run away. I am at the door. And when God shuts a door, no man can open. Yes. When God opens a door, no man can shut. Right. So he's, he comes and starts by introducing the, the topic. And he says, by the way, Moses is my servant. Mm -hmm. And I talk to him face to face. Right. Others, I talk to them through visions and dreams. But this one, face to face. After he made that statement, Concerning Moses, he asks them, by the way, were you not afraid? 
Why are you not afraid to speak against my servant? Why are you not afraid? In other words, as far as God is concerned, it's a fearful thing. It's a fearful thing to speak against his servant. It's a fearful thing to speak against God's servant. It doesn't matter how stupid they may be appearing. As soon as he asked them that question, why are you not afraid? He's, he, he left. The, the, the meeting was over. He left. But as soon as he left, Aaron turns and his sister is leprous. Leprosy has started eating on her. Why? Because of speaking against the anointing. There is a lot of leprosy in this nation. I will say it again. Yeah. There is a lot of leprosy in this nation among us, the Kenyan community. Yeah. And there are people being eaten by leprosy slowly, not knowing. You are working, but you never see the result of your work. You send the dollar back home so that they can build a house for you and they eat up the money. Yeah. They take a neighbor's picture and send it to you and tell you that this is your house. <laughs> your own, your very own brother, your very own sister, or your very own father is the one who is finishing you. Why? Because there is a leprosy. But we came tonight mm -hmm. so that we can finish that leprosy. Amen. I said we will finish that leprosy Amen. in the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. The moment Aaron sees the leprosy, he turns to Moses. Not my younger brother, not the husband of the Ethiopian, but to Moses, my Lord. Yes. And he says, my Lord, don't let this sin be upon her. Mm -hmm. Don't allow this to be upon her. In other words, Aaron is remembering that God said, this one we talk face to face. In other words, pray for her. And Reverend Moses, or Pastor Moses, or Bishop Moses, does not carry Bitterness. I'm talking to the pastors now. Yeah. Yeah. Reverend Moses does not carry bitterness. Yeah. Reverend Moses does not carry people. But yeah. oh, from what she said about me, I cannot, I cannot. Ah uh ah. -uh. Moses stands around and prays, Oh God, heal her now. You in your Bible. He says, Heal her now. He's not out for revenge. He's not out to fight for himself. Yes. He lets God fight for him. Yes. Well, pastor, they will talk about you because they are leprous. Yeah. Don't fight for yourself. Yeah. Let God fight for you. Amen. Let God fight your battles. Amen. Don't go defending yourself. Yeah. No, you keep quiet. Yeah. You, you keep quiet. Yeah. And you will see what God will do for you. But God answers Moses and tells Moses, where well, Moses, this guy, you leave to me. Problems like this one, you leave to me. Yes. It is true I answer you direct, but you leave this one to me. She has got to be out for seven days. In other words, you are going to be under delay for seven days. You are not going to move forward for seven days. There will be no progress for seven days. Yes. You will not achieve anything for seven days. Some of you are doing day one. Some of you are doing day six of your no progress. There is not a position as bad as no progress. Every time I make that statement, I remember. I remember. Let me give you this. That, 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 that. 
I remember this 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 couple. We we are we are having we, we had a couples meeting. We were seven couples and we were meeting fortnightly. And we meet on this one night we are talking about the God of Abraham. And one couple said we, 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 we are talking about the God of Abraham, the God who is never late, the God who provides at the right time. We, we are married five years, we don't have a baby. And you know in those days, back at home, when people got married in church, what we wanted to see was seven and a baby, nine months and 20 minutes later. <laughs> what we wanted to see was a baby, nine months and 20 minutes. This one has been married for five years, no baby. So we said we are going to pray. We told them kneel down. They knelt down. We laid our hands and we said, pray. Oh God, open every passage that needs to be opened for this couple to have a baby. In Jesus' name, amen. Go home. They went home. After some time, we started noticing that the wife was becoming quite healthy. She was becoming healthier and healthier and healthier. After nine months, she was too healthy to stay at home. She went to an ex hospital in Aku. And the doctors checked on her and they told her, the baby has not turned. So you have to walk around here so, 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 that, so, that, so, that, uh, so, so that the baby can turn. And she would walk, go up the stairs, they check on her and they would tell her, no progress. Keep walking. For two weeks, she was in the hospital walking around. But, and there's no progress. No progress. I could be talking to you and you are living in that land. The land of no progress. I don't know who told my wife that she is, she, Mrs. Morango is still in the hospital. So my wife called me and told me, Mrs. Morango is, is still in the hospital and she has not gotten a baby. I, I got mad with the devil. Said the devil is a liar. I got into my, my car. I picked my wife from our office and we went to an addict's hospital. We found this lady walking around. And we said, Can we go to your room? And we walked to her room. And I asked her, Tell me, Mama, are nine months over? And she said, Yes, Pastor, and two weeks on top. I told her, According to the laws of God, a baby is supposed to stay in the mother's womb for nine months. After nine months, the baby should be born. So I have come to speak to this baby and invite the baby to Kenya in the name of Jesus Christ. She said, yes, pastor. I told her, the Bible says, if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done. Are you in agreement? Yes. We joined our hearts in Alex Hospital and we started praying. And when I started praying, I started, you know, me, I, I'm a, I have a Presbyterian background. Presbyterian background. So I started praying like a Presbyterian. You know, free Presbyterians are organized. <laughs> so I started praying, telephone, telephone, telephone. As I was praying, now full gospel came in, and the gospel came in, charismatic came in. And by the time I'm praying, I'm saying, oh God, we want, we pray. And when we come tomorrow morning, we will see the baby and the mother safe in the name of Jesus. The more for us we think, the more we shout, the more they anoint you. <laughs> so I'm praying there. The nurses had in their office. And they decided to come and find out who is this idiot <laughs> that is making noise in the hospital. And they came. And the door was like that one. There was like a, a glass window. So they peeped and they saw us holding hands. And this man is saying, in the name of Jesus, when we come tomorrow, we want to see the mother and the baby safe. When we said amen, they disappeared. We did not know they were peeping there. So they disappeared and went back to their room. For us, we had prayed. We had, I'm now wiping my sweat. <coughs> Because we are praying, and you know when we pray like that, we sweat. We, we, we sweat. So, after we had finished praying, the husband walked in. And as soon as he walked in, the lady said, you go home. In our bedroom, in the wardrobe, the second drawer, there is a parcel, a juara. You bring that parcel tomorrow. 
those are clothes for the baby because the baby is coming tomorrow. And the husband asked, what did the doctor say? Forget about the doctor. You bring me the clothes. The baby is coming tomorrow. How are you feeling? Forget about how I am feeling. You bring me the clothes. The baby is coming tomorrow. And we left. And he also left. The following day, at 8.30, the phone in my house rang. I picked the phone. Hello? On the other side, Pastor, praise the Lord. I said, Amen. There was a man on the other end. Pastor, praise the Lord. Amen. Pastor, praise the Lord. I said, Brother, I, I, tell me what you want to tell me. And he said, Pastor, the baby has come. The baby has come. The baby has come. So that morning, when he went to take the clothes, he, that's when he realized the baby had come. So at one o'clock, my wife and I decided to go and welcome the baby to Kenya. So we went to Annex Hospital and we found the mother and the baby. Amen. And, I, and I asked the mother, tell me, tell us the story. What happened? How was it? And the lady said, Pastor, when you prayed, I didn't feel anything. But I knew the baby is coming tomorrow. When I went to bed, I was not feeling anything. But I knew the baby is coming tomorrow. At midnight, I didn't feel anything. But I knew the baby is coming tomorrow. At 4.30 in the morning, the baby started knocking and saying, I want to come to Kenya. So I pressed the bell. I pressed the bell to call the nurses. By the time the nurses are getting into my room, the baby is also arriving in Kenya. Amen. So the, the, the nurses took the baby, went and cleaned the baby, and brought back the baby. Then they told me, that's a, that, that's a mother telling, me, telling us, then they told me, we now believe that your God hears and answers prayers. Amen. We now believe that your God hears and answers prayers. Because yesterday, when that man was praying, we heard him making noise. We came at the door and we peeped and we saw you holding hands. And we were wondering, what is he going to do to her? What is he going to induce her? That's what they were asking. But now they are saying, we now believe Amen. that you are God. Hears and answers prayers. I came to tell somebody here. Our God hears and answers prayers. Huh? You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. If two of you shall agree on earth as touching, as touching, you say anything, boy. As touching anything, anything, whatever it is, whatever it is, you agree, it shall be done. And you don't have to feel any gunyeres for it to be done. Because it is not the Gujarat which are doing it, it's Jehovah. Yes. I'm, not going, I'm not going to speak again. I'm done. I am done. Are, are we in agreement? Yes. Are we in agreement? Yes. Have you received the word of the Lord? Yes. Have, have you received the word of the Lord? Yes. Are you ready for your miracle? Yes. Are you ready for your miracle? Yes. Now capture those words. If two of you shall agree on earth. Yes. Are we still on earth? Yes. Are we on earth? Yes. Can you feel the earth be beneath you? Yes. That means we are still here on earth. Yes. And we are in agreement. Yes. It's time for your miracle. Yes. It's time for your miracle. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Just, 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 just put your hand on your, on your chest. 
Let's put a little chest and declare, Father, Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I stand upon this altar. I stand upon this altar in full agreement, in full agreement with the word. With the that, I have that I have received. I bring myself, I bring myself under, the subjection under the subjection of the word that I have received. Of the word that I have received. And right now, and right now I, am in I am in agreement with the anointing, with the anointing upon, this altar. upon this altar. I am in agreement, I am in agreement with your servant as he has declared your word. Anointing. 
and the graces that you have placed in me, may that grace operate in their lives. As you have opened doors for me to places I would never have gone, places where my education would never have taken me, places where my father's name would never have taken me. Lord, I pray that you will open doors for them that they shall acknowledge this is God and be glorified in their lives. Let healing come upon their bodies, upon their relatives, in the name of Jesus Christ and to your own glory. As a result of the one they have received tonight and the gift that they give tonight, cause them to flourish. Let that gift open doors for them and present them before great men for your own glory. Because I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Can I take your greetings to the people at home? Can I tell them that we have people in uh, Seattle who will be praying for us? Yes. And when you come to Kenya, can you come and visit us? Yes. Huh? Yes. And will you promise that you'll be praying for the government? Yes. And praying for the president? Yes. And praying for the people back at home? Yes. May the Lord bless you. Amen. I just lift up my hands to bless you. May the Lord bless your going out and you are coming in. May he shine his countenance upon every one of you. May your children be blessed. May your businesses be blessed. May your resources be blessed. May you walk in the blessings of the Lord. May you be filled with revelation knowledge. May you be filled with the wisdom of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so, so, so much.